Hello and welcome to this evening's webinar event hosted by Texas Instruments Australia. And we have a terrific one for you this evening. We will be looking at statistics as it is in the HSC Mathematics Standard course with particular technology focus on the TI-30X Plus MathPrint calculator, which is NESA approved in New South Wales. Um, the presenter for this evening is Mr. Peter Flynn. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Brian. Fantastic to always have you on the program, Peter. Peter is a master of many things. He is one of the senior consultants for Texas Instruments Australia uh, and has been in the teaching field for more than a couple of decades, particularly with a focus on the use of computer algebra systems in teaching, learning and assessment. Uh, thank you, Peter. I shall hand over to you. Thank you, Brian. I think that 20 should read 30 these days, but uh, that's what happens. <laughs> Fair okay. enough. So there's a handout accompanying this. So there's five examples that we're going to look at. And uh, the first example, we're going to uh, compare the central tendency and spread of uh, two data sets. And so this example shows how to use the statistical functions uh, of this calculator to compare uh, data displays using uh, mean and median to describe and interpret the center or location uh, and quartiles, interquartile range and standard deviation to describe and interpret spread. Uh, we have two companies A and B and they produce packets of chips uh, which are labelled as having a weight of 50 grams and a random sample of 10 packets is taken from each company. Uh, each packet is weighed and the results in grams are shown uh, there in the handout. And part A asks us uh, for each company uh, use the TI-30X plus math print uh, to calculate the sample mean weight, the sample standard deviation and also the uh, five number summary. So let's start off by doing part A. So uh, what I'd uh, like to do here is to press um, data and that takes us uh, into the list feature of the calculator. Now, as you can see uh, by me scrolling down, I've already entered company A's data into L1 or list one. And uh, if I scroll across to list two, that's where company B's data is housed. Uh, I've entered the first nine weights, uh, but not the 10th. The 10th weight is 50.9. And to enter data into a list, uh, for example, we just simply press uh, 50.9 and then press uh, enter. So we currently have the data uh, inputted into the calculator. And now for the first little while, we'll concentrate on the summary statistics for company A. So uh, if we now press second data, and that takes us to our uh, statistical functionality, uh, we want one variable stat, so we'll press number two. And we, first of all, want to access the summary statistics for company A. So we will choose or select uh, list one or L1. We want to keep the frequency as one. So with that L1 flashing, I'm going to press enter and then enter uh, to highlight calc, which is short for calculate, and then press enter. And what we see here are some summary statistics for company A. Uh, scrolling down, we note that the sample mean uh, is 50 grams. The sample standard deviation correct to two decimal places is 1.27. Scrolling down further, uh, we begin our five number summary. Our minimum weight is 47.4. Our lower quartile is 49.2. Our median is 50.05, our upper quartile is 50.6, and our maximum is 51.9. Now what we will do is we will perform the same calculation 
for the sample from company B. So if we press second data uh, to again access our statistical facility, then we press number two for one variable uh, statistics. This time we scroll across to highlight L2 and press enter, then press enter again down to highlight calc, which is short for calculate and press enter. And we get the corresponding sample statistics for company B. So scrolling down, we note that the sample mean is 50.8. The sample standard deviation correct to two decimal places is 0.47. Scrolling down further, uh, our minimum uh, is 50. Our lower quartile is 50.5. Our median is 50.9. Our upper quartile is 51.1. And our maximum is 51.5. So in part C of this question, we will end up uh, comparing uh, the summary statistics for company A and company B. Before then, uh, we are asked in part B, for company A, we're asked the question, are the weights of any of the packets in the sample considered outliers by the 1.5 times interquartile range rule? So, what we're going to do here is show you how to do it by actually dragging the figures for Q3 and Q1 out of the calculator and perform the calculation uh, on the home screen. So what we will do now is we'll press second data and we'll go back into our one variable stat. So we press two, making sure that we've got L1 selected. So we press enter. Uh, enter because we want the frequency to be one. Uh, enter to highlight calc. Press enter. And we're back now to company A's summary statistics. So the first thing is we want to check the lower fence value. We want to determine the lower fence value and then determine the upper fence value and compare those to the minimum and maximum values to see whether uh, indeed there are any outliers. Um, we're doing this numerically. Uh, ideally, you would also supplement this with a, a graphical uh, description of, of how, to, or a graphical analysis of, uh, of this. So what we will do now is we'll scroll up and we will find Q1 and we press enter. And what you'll note is that Q1 is pasted now onto the home screen. Press the subtraction key, then 1.5, and then times, open bracket. Now we press second data again. This time we can go into stat vars by pressing one. Scroll up until we find Q3. Press enter, then press the subtraction key. Second data again to go back into stat vars, press one or enter. Scroll up until you make contact with Q1. Press enter, close the brackets, press enter. And our lower fence value is 47.1. So we will analyze that just in a moment. Now we want the corresponding upper fence value. What we can do is we can press the uh, up key once, up key again to highlight our previous input. Press enter to bring it down to a new entry or author line. And we can now edit this. We can press our button to the left so that it is hovering over Q1. And we're going to change Q1 to Q3, and we're going to change that uh, minus sign to a plus sign. So we press second data, go into stat bars again, and scroll up, make contact with Q3, and press enter. And you'll see that uh, Q1 becomes Q3. We now press the addition key, 
And so that replaces the subtraction sign there. Uh, everything else looks all right. We press enter and we get an upper fence value of 52.7. So how do we analyze this? Well, if you recall, the minimum value was 47.4, which is greater than the lower fence value of 47.1. If you also recall, the maximum value is 51.9, and that's less than the upper fence value, which is 52.7. So in effect, the uh, data set is contained within those bounds of the lower fence and the upper fence. And we have therefore shown that there are no weights in the sample that are considered uh, outliers. Part C asks us for um, a, a, a interpretation, if possible, about the manufacturing processes of the two companies. So what, if anything, can be concluded about these processes? So uh, what we can do is we can compare the two five number summaries, which um, hopefully you've made a note of, and we can see that company A produces packets of chips uh, with a weight centered closer to 50 grams. In, in fact, the sample mean was 50 grams, uh, but company A uh, had a greater variation. The sample standard deviation was greater, 1.27 compared to 0.47, and the interquartile range was greater, uh, 1.4 compared to 0 0.6. Company B produces packets of weight, packets of chips, pardon me, uh, that are centered slightly greater than 50 grams, whereas some of the packets produced by company A are less than 50 grams. This is one of these open-ended uh, questions where our students will um, note and write down uh, different things that they see as they're looking and comparing the summary statistics from the two data sets. Uh, so that concludes. Uh, example number one. Example two, uh, we look at a way of seeding the TI30X plus math print so that we can perform uh, some simulations and some sampling. And what we need to do uh, before we generate what I'm going to put in, in inverted commas at random numbers is we need to seed the calculator. And so this example shows us how to seed the calculator to generate a random number between 0 and 1. Now really, if we're being strict, we're talking about pseudo random numbers, not random numbers, but I'll use random numbers um, from now on and just envisage that uh, there's uh, it's being used with inverted commas. So it's important to uh, decide whether you want students generating the same set of random numbers or different sets of random numbers. That's the first decision you need to make as a teacher. Uh, it's mostly desirable to have each student generating a different set of random numbers. And so to achieve this, what you need to do is to assign each student a different seed value. Uh, for example, students could enter their mobile phone number as a seed value or certainly the last three or four digits of it. Um, note that the full mobile phone number isn't going to work because the leading zero uh, is not required. So basically what we do is we seed the calculator and then the calculator goes off producing random numbers from a certain point um, in a list. And so if you have the students all at different points, then they're going to produce a different list of, of random numbers. If you have them all with the same seed, then they're going to all produce the same list of random numbers. That's going to be quite disconcerting and it could ruin their concept of, of randomness uh, forever. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll just clear the screen there. So press clear uh, and I'm going to uh, use the integer four to store a seed value uh, to the command uh, rand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter uh, four. Then I'm going to press the stow key, which is stow is short for store. 
and then I'm going to press uh, second and then the uh, factorial NCR NPR button. You can see above it in blue is random. Press that. I've got two choices, rand or rand int, and I'm going to choose uh, rand. So one or enter and then press enter. And I've now seeded um, my calculator. So to generate now a random number between zero and one, I can press second and then the factorial etc. cetera uh, button, press one or enter for random and then press enter. And that's my first random number between zero and one. To generate further random numbers between zero and one, it's just a matter of pressing enter each time. And there we go. So that's uh, showing you how to produce successive random numbers between zero and one. So that completes the very short example number two. Example three, uh, what we'll do is we'll just show you uh, how to uh, generate some random integers uh, between 1 and 12 on the home screen one at a time. So once again, I'll press clear just to clear the screen. And uh, I'll press second and then factorial etc button. Press 2 for randint, which is short for random integer. And if we want to produce random integers between 1 and 12, the syntax, well, first of all, the lower bound is one. The comma is found by pressing second and then the decimal point. Then our upper bound is 12. Close the bracket and press enter. And our first random integer between one and 12 is indeed uh, 12. Again, like the previous example, to produce successive uh, random integers, you just need to uh, press enter. So the next one's eight. Next one's four, next one's six. So it seems to be producing uh, even numbers. <laughs> Two, seven, very good. Uh, so you could use that, for example, if you wanted to uh, simulate um, birth months. For example, January could represent one, February could represent two, all the way through to December representing uh, 12. And you could analyze with your students, not the birthday problem, but in fact, the birth month um, problem. So uh, that would be a way of doing some introductory uh, simulations with the random integer command. So that's the very short. I'm just wondering, could I ask a question here? And I know it's a bit of a Dorothy Dixer. Um, could that be used to simulate the uh, result of the sum of two dice that are thrown? Uh, I'm going to be doing that in example five, Brian. Oh, okay. Yep. Because I, I, I knew I know that that's a, often a misconception uh, that a random integer between one and twelve <laughs> certainly does not represent what uh, we get as the sum of from two dice. For a start, throwing two dice, you're never going to be able to get one. Uh, yes. Now, when I do get to example five, I'll be simulating the rolling of two six-sided dice. So I'll be having random integer between one and six, another random integer between one and six, and, and adding them together. Um, so I won't so actually be showing, I won't actually be showing the misconception that you have mentioned, but now that it's mentioned, um, teachers can be aware of that uh, and, and mention it, um, discuss it in their discourse. So that's very Absolutely. good. Absolutely, yes. Okay, uh, now moving on to example uh, number four. Uh, so uh, Rachel wishes to determine uh, the opinion of her year level, year levels 200 students about whether they should have the valedictory dinner before or after the end of year exams. Describe how Rachel could select a simple random sample of 40 students with the TI-30X plus math print um, to obtain results which are likely to represent the views of the entire year level. So let's look at um, how Rachel uh, might do that. 
Uh, first of all, just going to clear the home screen here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to press data and we're going to enter into our list facility or feature. Now, I would like to clear those lists L1 and L2 of their values. So if I press data again and scroll down to number four, the command there is clear all. So if I press four or enter, that clears all the lists of their values. What we're going to do now is show you how to get 40 random integers between one and 200 uh, quite expediently. So we'll press data, then we're going to press button to the left, and then we're going to press number three for sequence. And we want to fill list L1 with a sequence. Note at the bottom of that screen that the size of the list is between 1 and 50. So we can house 50 values as a maximum in list 1. So with list 1 selected, we press Enter. And first of all, now we want to enter in an expression there. And the expression we're going to enter is we're going to enter random integer. So if we press second and then the factorial, etc. button and press two for rand int, then our lower bound is one, second decimal point for the comma. Our upper bound is 200, close the bracket. We want to start at one. Now, Rachel wanted to sample 40 students. We understand that, we'll explain that there could be a complicating factor in a moment, we'll see. So we wanna start at one and we wanna end at 40. So this is saying, rightio, we want a list of 40 random integers uh, from a range of integers from 1 to 200. So we uh, scroll down to highlight uh, sequence fill. So that should be flashing. And then we press uh, enter. And we end up now with uh, 40 random integers between 1 and 200, as you can see there. So I'm, I scrolled partially the way down. Scrolling back up, I thought I might have seen a repeat. So that's the issue, is here what you would need to be cognizant of is that you might get a repeating value. And so you would then have to uh, add, uh, you know, a corresponding number of random integers to, in to indeed get yourself up to that set of 40. So um, make sure that students are aware of that possibility that you could get a repeat uh, performing this particular um, procedure. And so the, the ethos behind um, example four would be to uh, get into Rachel's shoes, into her brain, and then to um, write out and to perform uh, that random sample uh, using the calculator. So that's uh, example four complete. And now we get to our final example, uh, which is example number five shows us uh, how to use a calculator to simulate 50 trials of rolling two six-sided dice. So we're going to use the TI30X plus math print data editor and list formulas feature uh, to simulate 50 trials of rolling two six-sided dice. Uh, we're going to find the sample mean for these 50 trials and also the sample a standard deviation for these 50 trials. Okay, 
So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to press data uh, to enter our lists. Uh, notice that I've already cleared the list. The way to clear lists is to press uh, data again, and then scroll down to clear all, um, press enter, or just press four from the start. And there we go. We've got a, a uh, cleared lists in L1 and L2. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to populate uh, L1. And we're going to populate L1 with uh, rolling um, a six-sided die uh, 50 times. So what we do is we press data, and then we press left, and then number three uh, for sequence. And our fill list is L1. Now notice here that the size of the list is between one and 50. So you can, in each list, L1, L2, L3, you can house a maximum of 50 values, uh, which is actually um, a good thing here, because when you're performing simulations, sometimes what we can do is we can choose an N value which is too large. And when you're comparing an experimental value such as a sample mean to a theoretical value like a theoretical mean, if you have uh, n too large, you can get a, a value at the start for your sample mean extremely close to the theoretical mean, uh, which sort of kills the um, activity a little bit. What you want to do is you want to build up the size of the sample size uh, progressively. So maybe start with 10, uh, then go to 50, then go to larger numbers of n. So indeed, what you're doing is you're watching the sample mean at each stage um, jump around the theoretical mean. Now we know that the theoretical mean in this instance is going to be um, seven for the uh, sum of rolling the two six-sided die. This, the, uh, the, the theoretical mean is going to be seven. Uh, so you, you want to see it jumping around seven, but you also want to see it approaching seven as you increase uh, the number of trials. So my advice to you teachers there is when you're doing such simulations to start with um, a, a small sample size and build to a larger sample size. So we've got uh, L1 is flashing, so we press enter to select it. And notice here that we've got our random integer uh, command uh, already set up uh, with a lower bound of one and an upper bound of six. So just a reminder, you press second and then the factorial etc. sign and then press two to access random integer. So all I'm going to do now is head back to our sequence command. So there we are. We've got random, random integer one to six. We want to um, start at one. And in this instance, we want to end at 50. So this is the setup for rolling a six-sided die 50 times. And we continue down to highlight sequence fill and we press uh, enter. And that is the results now. We've got um, the six-sided die has been rolled 50 times and the results have been housed into L1 or list one. Now press the button to the right to go to the top of list two. And what we'll do now is we will press data. We'll press uh, our left button and then three or enter uh, for sequence to access the sequence command. Press arrow to the right. So we want to highlight L2 and now we want to press enter to select L2 because now what we want to do is we want to roll the second die 50 times. We shouldn't need to change our sequence command set up there. We've got um, random integer 
one to six. We want to start at one, end at 50. So it's a matter of scrolling down to highlight sequence fill and then press enter. And what we see is we've now got our second die rolled 50 times. So what we've got in list one is we've got um, our first die roll 50 times. In list two, we've got our second die rolled 50 times. And now what we're going to do is we're going to obtain the sum for each of those 50 trials. So uh, after this, we want to see in L3, for example, the values 8, 9, 7, and 8, for example. So this is quite a nice uh, activity because what we get the students to do now is to think about what formula we should use for L3 based on L1 and L2, and then enter that formula and populate list three with those sums. So what we do now is we um, press our button to the arrow button to the right and make sure that we're at the top of L3. We press data and then we press the arrow button to the right now to highlight formula and press enter. And what you'll see is that list three um, is highlighted and we've now got an author line or an entry line where we can add a formula. So you can ask the students, well, okay, what formula should we enter here? And hopefully they would say, well, okay, we want L3 to be L1 plus L2. So if we press data now, we access the names for the lists. So we can see there one or enter that pastes L1 into the author or entry line. Press the addition key. Then we press data again. This time we want L2, so we can press two or scroll down to highlight L2 and um, press enter. So there's our list formula. So L3 is equal to L1 plus L2. And now if we press enter, L3 should now show, and in fact it does show, the results of simulating um, 50 trials of rolling two six-sided dice and obtaining the sum on each occasion. And as we uh, noted previously, we do see, for example, eight, nine, seven, eight, etc. Now, here's a neat way of finding the sum of a list. And we can uh, do that by uh, first of all, pressing data. Then we press the left arrow button. And you can see that next to sequence number three, there's an arrow between the three and the sequence. We scroll down. We see that there's another command there, number four, which is sum list. So if we press uh, enter, we want to sum the values that are in list three. So we uh, highlight L3 and now we press enter to select it. So L3 is selected. Now the cursor uh, is flashing over calc, which is short for calculate. And we press enter and we get the sum of list three to be 335. And notice that there's a prompt there asking us, do we want to store this value? And in this instance, uh, we actually do, because what we want to do if we to work out the sample mean using the sum is we can take the sum, which is 335, and divide it by the number of values. So in other words, x bar is equal to the sum of the x values divided by n, where um, 
sigma x is 335 and uh, n uh, is actually 50. So we press enter and we can see now that uh, x is selected and press enter. And it means now that our value for the sum of the list values x, it's stored, but at the moment it's all quite mysterious. Where is it? If we press second mode to quit out of the lists and go to the home screen, notice that on our TI30X plus math print, we have a button there, X, Y, Z, T, A, B, C, D. If I press that now, X, and then divide by 50 and press enter, we get 6.7. In other words, 335 divided by 50 is 6.7. And we've just calculated the uh, sample mean for these 50 trials, and we haven't used the statistical functionality. So that's showing you another way of finding the mean. And so then you can talk about the fact that 6.7 is reasonably close to 7. You could um, try or perform this simulation again to see whether you get a value closer to, to 7 or further away. You could get the students to compare all their values. So there's many possible ways that you can proceed um, from here uh, in further analysis. Yeah, thanks, Peter. I, I really like the way you uh, showed us that. Um, yeah, somebody did ask in the chat, uh, could we use the uh, one var stats command? Uh, which, uh, as you as you say, yes, we could, but you've shown us yet another way to uh, to find this result. Yes. Uh, so, to to use um, our statistical functionality now, if we press second data to access our uh, statistical features, we can then uh, press two for one variable stats. And let's be careful to scroll across to highlight um, L3. L3, yeah. And then press enter. Our frequency is one, so press enter. Um, so calculate is highlighted. Press enter. And Great. there's our corresponding um, X bar, which is uh, 6.7. So that franks um, our calculation using the list sum feature. And here now we also have access to the sample standard deviation, which correct up to two decimal places is 2.29. Uh, depending upon the experience of the students and, and your requirements as a teacher, you may not do this in standard, but you may do it uh, in another uh, HSC mathematics course, is compare the sample standard deviation uh, to a theoretical one. So that completes um, my five examples. Examples one and five you know, were quite um, lengthy, and then the ones in the middle were quite short. Uh, but the brief for today was to uh, show you the uh, statistical features uh, of the TI30X plus math print, um, both for teaching and learning, but also for efficiency of calculations in the exams. For example, you have the ability to call up uh, statistics variables like Q1 and Q3, paste them onto the home screen and perform calculations um, seamlessly in the time pressure environment of an examination. We've also showed you some uh, brief uh, thoughts about uh, simple random sampling, uh, an introduction into how you seed the calculator, how you access uh, random numbers, uh, random integers, um, and throughout, I think an important thread here has been to utilize uh, the list facility to house our values, to house our statistics, to house our results, and then 
use either the statistics functionality or the sequence functionality or the sum of list functionality uh, to analyze um, uh, those, those data sets. So that's probably all from me, Brian. So um, thanks very much for hosting and we hand it over to you and uh, we hope everybody has a good evening. And I think when we change the bio, well, we need to change the bio now from uh, 20 to 30, <laughs> sadly, there in the... Add some more years. Yeah, so, thank... Very yeah, so thank you, Brian, and uh, over to you. Thanks. But we certainly do appreciate, Peter, that you, uh, whether it be 20 or 30, you are uh, uh, speaking from many years of uh, experience and uh, classroom teaching there. Um, there's been a lot of appreciative comments come through in the chat there. What I really like there is you've shown us a, um, a, a range of ways, of different ways of um, doing, doing things for exploration. You've given us an, an appropriate suite of uh, sample problems. And certainly there's some, uh, you know, there's some tips and tricks with the calculator. I, I really like that uh, sequence fill command, for example. Um, but what I particularly appreciate here is that you're, you're not just utilising the technology to uh, mindlessly stamp out a result. M more importantly, you're using it to help facilitate understanding of concepts. So that's us for this evening. I bid you all good night and thank you once again to our presenter, Mr. Peter Flynn. Thank you, Good Brian. Evening Good evening. <laughs>